Yeah. Um, so to, moving on from sevens a little bit, as that ends, well, we've got a f- big things coming down the, the pipeline in 15s, right? Obviously, we've got the second Lions test and third Lions test um, coming up. And and then rugby championship, first blood is low cup is in, I think it's August 7th. So coming up pretty quickly. Um, just quickly on the Lions, have you, have you seen much of the Lions? Did you, you, st- you stayed in touch with it? Well, I suppose being in quarantine, you've had plenty of time in your hotel yeah, room exactly. to catch up on all this. Well, and the fact that I'm an absolute rugby nerd. So any type of game like that going on, I'm on it. So I've got this portal that's got all the games the world over, which is why I watch a lot of the MLR content. And um, some of the guys um, were, were giving me a stick about, are you going to make it a, a late night or an early morning? And the kickoff was around about, I think, half one. Um, so I didn't actually watch it live. I watched it the following morning. But you can't not get involved with it. I guess it's a little bit disappointing from a rugby perspective. And for anybody that did catch the sevens, over the last three days and the women for the next three coming up. It's a bit of a shame that they're overlapping. And I certainly was really disappointed when I looked at the fixtures and saw that the second test is going to be on the same time as as the women's finals day, which is a bit rubbish for the wider public. But I don't think there's much competition. I think the wider public will be watching the sevens. The rugby aficionados will be watching the Lions. So I think it's quite a nice juxtaposition, I guess. It's just a bit of a shame it has to happen. It's, it's it's you know the olympics is it, we talked to about like how it, is it it's so different there's some disappointment it's different experience lions i mean such a different experience as well right for these players that have gone out there no fans as it, it feels a little bit like it's it's i'm glad it's happening in a way like it's great rugby but it just doesn't feel quite like a lions tour really um no, yeah, I, it doesn't i don't know mean but nevertheless, it's it's amazing rugby. Um, the first test was 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 a pretty good one. The second half, especially, and we'll see what happens this weekend. Do you think that because with South Africa not playing much rugby now, playing the Lions, how do you think that is going to help them prepare for the rugby championship? Do you think it's, well, it's they're going to come out playing the Lions like really flying because they're they're playing such high level competition? Oh, I don't know. I mean, watching how attritional it was, those hits. I mean, they're like NFL standard yeah. hits, aren't they? Without the pads, it's just insane physicality. These guys, you know, 120 kilograms, what, 250, 260 pounds running into each other, going hard. How do you keep doing that back to back? I mean, the Lions now, it's going to be basically a five week tour of it. They'll be battered by the end. And these South Africans, they've played no rugby in what, 19 months? It's a really tough ask to think that they're going to come out the back of this intense Lions environment. And albeit, again, you know, without the crowds, that emotional energy perhaps isn't there. But the build-up, the psychology and the physiology is not going to bode well for potentially going into now a six-week block for the rugby championship. And for what I'm hearing, South Africa will be playing their games in Australia. So they're going to have to quarantine there. They're going to have to be in that exposed environment. They're not going to be able to bounce around as they usually would do. Um, and it might well be a very, very tough thing logistically, which at the moment is playing a massive part of how we try and predict how these teams are going to go. So, yes, this is interesting because obviously the schedule is up, up in up in arms for, for the Rugby Championship and for, for the first. I think I read that the first blood is low is going to in, um, that Australia are going down to New Zealand and they've got special, you know, dispensation yeah. Yeah, to, to go in as some economic break or something, right? So yeah. that's on August 7th. Um, uh, and then the, the rugby championship starts, I think, the 13th. So are you saying that South Africa won't play any games in South Africa? They'll be, just go and camp out in Australia? Or are they going to play? Because I, I thought that they were going to play Argentina in South Africa and then move to Australia. Well, the chat from what they're saying is they're going to try and do all their games in Australia because when they go to Australia, there's a certain incubation period, if you like, that quarantine that they have to hit before they can actually go and play their games. So rather than perhaps delay that, it would logistically make sense to do that game for Argentina in South Africa. The white elephant here, and no one really speaks about this, is how malleable and understanding Argentina are as a union. They went to Australia last year for the rugby championship. They were doing workouts in their hotel rooms for like 15 days for before before Test rugby, for three days before an international. They went through the mire and still played so well in that tournament. 
So it feels as though everyone makes up their own plans and then they just say, oh, well, Argentina, you'll just you'll just do what you say. You know, you'll just follow suit and make our plans fit. So I think there's a little bit of politicising of things as well, which is always annoying in sport, but it tends to happen. Um, hopefully, Argentina can play in South Africa and fill that gap before the blood is low and then there'll be a nice run in throughout because these games are massive and, you know, for the viewers who are going to be watching it, it's something to really get excited about because for me, it's some of the best rugby out there.